Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon. This is going to be a talk tarot with me session all about how to get back your spiritual mojo. Um, spiritual mojo is my term for um, getting back the zest, the inspiration that you have when you are starting a spiritual path. Sometimes when you are first awakened, um, and awakened by, I mean, you're discovering stuff about yourself, you are finding subject matters that you wanna learn more about, and it usually revolves around the spiritual realm, so it's like um, digging in deep and finding out more about who you are and what your belief system is. Some people will start in the realm of the occult, and it kinda of like shifts and moves into that. Some people will start in the whole galactic realm and start learning about ancient, um, you know, aliens and all that kind of stuff. Other people, woo, other people start on the path of witches and learning about spell work and how to use your own, manipulate your own energy and manifest what you want. Um, other people like me, we started or I started with a divination tool and divination is just another term for, um, you know, being able to use a tool to gain some fortunes, to learn about a fortune or your future or learn about yourself. So for me, it was learning the tarot. Um, and so we all jump into this path one way or another. We are inspired one way or another. Um, and, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's like that. My hair is so nasty today. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to leave it alone, so I apologize. Um, it's like that. Um, it's like with anything. Anytime you start something new, you are so inspired and you are so like in love and you just want to learn all about it and you can't stop learning all about it. And then as time progresses, it gets kind of boring or you need a little bit of a change because it's, it's starting to become repetitive. Um, and believe it or not, your spiritual journey can do the same thing. You can find yourself becoming less inspired, more like tired of the same old thing, or you, you desire to learn something different. You desire to take a class or maybe your friends groups are dwindling because people are like looking at you like some weirdo because why are you into that kind of stuff? Or, you know, everyone has their own little their own little hang up. But for me, I went through a major um, losing my spiritual mojo, I would say about two years ago. Um, I think it was about it was about two years ago, maybe, maybe a little less, but it was generally around there. And so as you can see, I've been wanting to do this video for a while now, I just haven't had the time chance to do it. So anyways, um, when I lost my spiritual mojo, I was losing a little bit of an interest in the path that I was on. I was feeling the call to do something more with myself for one. Um, I was starting to dabble into spirit communication. I was trying to learn more about that. But then at the same time, two years ago, I was going through a lot in my personal life. Um, my job was shifting my, um, you know, there was some stuff going on with my personal life, with my family. Um, I went, I went through a major loss, and um, it was just a lot. And I think it all of that kind of, and there was a lot of drama at the workplace that I was working at. So all of that kind of weighed on me, and it really caused me to lose sight of the real reason why I started my spiritual path. Um, and so, of course, I lost interest. Um, I wasn't in involved in any of the, the books that I was reading. I wasn't finishing the books. I wasn't feeling called to blog. Um, I, it was just a lot. It was, I was going through a lot and I think it was like the things that once kept me happy and interested in my path weren't doing it for me anymore. So I took a break. So that's the first thing. Um, when you are starting to feel your spiritual mojo dwindling away, my first advice for you is to give yourself a break. Step back. Don't feel like you have to stay involved in it even though it doesn't interest you at that moment. There is nothing wrong with taking a step, st step back, shutting off the social media, shutting off you know certain responsibilities that you had, whether it is um, maybe you're taking a couple days off from work. Maybe you are, you know, going on a little vacation just to get away and to unplug. Um, 
turning off your phone entirely. I mean, everyone has their own little thing. And so for me, it was, I took a step back from social media. Um, I stopped giving me myself the pressure to, to, you know, put out all these client readings and whatnot. I think I even emailed a couple of my clients and I told them, I'm sorry, there will be a delay in your order. Um, as I take this time for me and nine times out of 10, my clients were completely okay with that. They actually embraced that about me. Um, so sometimes you have to pull back. And that is the first advice I have, especially when you're feeling your spiritual mojo like going away. Give yourself the time to just be in yourself, to just figure shit out, take a day off, whether it's a day or two or three, and just get back into the reality of your present space. Um, a lot of times, those of us who are on the spiritual path, we are either focusing a lot on the future or we are doing a lot of past work. We're working on our past. We are working on our shadow self. Um, and that can get very exhausting because a lot of times we forget to pay attention to the present moment. <laughs> And I would say that is probably one of the main reasons why we get burned out. So that's another term. I use spiritual mojo, but it's also like being burned out. You just burn yourself out. You just don't feel like doing anything that you once loved before. So when you find yourself getting into that, take a break. It is okay to take a break. It is okay to, you know, shut off and, and do your own thing and recuperate and then you come back feeling good. So that's the first thing. The second tip is get a reading. <laughs> now, if you are a reader and you love to read for yourself, then cool, you know, read for yourself. But I would say getting a reading from someone else, a reader that you trust, or it could be someone that you've been eyeballing that you are really curious to see how they read, get a reading from them. Um, and literally ask that question, where am I at right now? I need some guidance. Please, you know, pull the cards to give me some guidance on myself, on my current situation, where I am headed with my business or where I am headed with my spiritual path, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes getting somebody else's insight is gold. It will help you. It will give you a fresh new perspective. And it's what I did. So that was the next thing I did. I ordered a reading from um, one of the, the readers that I admire. And I asked just a simple question. I was like, I really don't know what to ask. I just said, I just need a message from spirit. I need a message from the cards. I just need something to 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 read that will inspire me again. I was lacking inspiration. So I think I I gave like I gave her this whole paragraph of <laughs> I've lost my my mojo and I want to find it, you know? That's I think it was like something like that and I just said I just need some guidance from the cards, please help me. Um so when I got my reading back, it was everything that I needed to hear. And I think I actually ordered two readings. I got um an email reading back from one one girl and then I got another reading which was actually a rune reading and that one opened my eyes too because it was my very first rune reading experience so that was really cool but they both gave me major insight um and so the reading basically gave me messages from spirit it gave me um validation of who I am and as a reader, it was nice to see the cards that were pulled because then I can kind of go and look at it and give my own perspective of it as well as embracing the reader's message. Um, but she also gave me some really good, valuable advice for me. And it was to fall in love again with what with my path. And it was to be inspired and to read an inspirational book. And at the time, I was reading a lot of um, Rebecca Rosen's books she's a, a medium and so i was reading a lot of her books about how to connect with spirit and how to spirit communicate because that's the path i wanted to be on and i was like you know a, an inspirational book that's a good idea and i remember my whole journey really started from reading one of gabrielle bernstein's books um i think it was it was like one of the the 40 whatever it was it's like a workbook kind of a thing so i want to say i picked up gabrielle bernstein's the universe has your back and I think that was the one that I read but unfortunately I wanted to show it to you guys but I don't have it 
Um, it's in a box in my storage. So <laughs> um, I don't have it out with me, but Gabrielle Bernstein writes some really good inspirational books. So that is one person that I will recommend. I have a couple here though that I really, really would also recommend. Material Girl Mystical World, The Now Age Guide to High Vibe Life. This is by um, Ruby Warrington. This book um, is a really, really, really good book. It's inspirational. It has different um, techniques for getting into your spiritual path. So it talks about the tarot. It talks about astrology. It talks about um, just a bunch of different stuff. Um, so it's kind of like, like jumbling up a bunch of different things that you can do. And it's also her quest for finding that high vibrational life and what works for her. So very inspirational. I highly recommend this book. Another one is an, actually an old one that I've had for a while. This is by Lucy Pierce. It's Moon Time. This one is, is and has been um, inspiring me to get more in touch with my menstrual cycle. Um, so if you guys know me, you know I'm all about that. Um, but especially within the last three years because I got off of the birth control pill after being on it for 11 years. And my body had to go through some major changes just to get back into the flow of having a flow. <laughs> um, so I want to say I got off of it in March of 20, 2015 because that's when I got married. And um, I figured, you know, my, my, me and my husband are ready to have a baby if it ever happens. Well, it took me about a year and a half. Um, I would say about March, April of 2016. Um... No, not even. It was more like two years because I would say it was about, it was after my brother died. So my brother died in 2016 in the summer. So it was like that fall, I started to see my cycle kind of starting to sync up a little bit. But before that, it was like I would go three or four months without a period and then it would have a period and then it would go away again. Um, so I would say by 2017, that whole year, um, I was having a period every month. It wasn't the book that helped me have that happen, but it was inspired by it because reading about your moon time or your period and reading about how to embrace your menstrual cycle and embrace, you know, the fact that we have that and blah, 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 and not to look at it as a burden, like, oh, I'm going to be on my period again or oh, PMS or whatever, even though we all do it, um, it helped me become more comfortable with my cycle. I was brought up in a household where we just don't talk about our period or um, I was never taught how to track my cycle. You know, how sad is that? So the book helped me. It's inspired me to do that. It inspired me to pay more closer attention. So I have an app on my phone where <laughs> I actually keep track of my, my cycle and I keep track of my moods and stuff. And now like three years later, I am starting to see like where my body is in my cycle and how it feels and if I'm having certain mood swings or if I'm having certain cravings or my you know if my boobs hurt or whatever I notice like oh, okay this is where I'm at in my cycle so it's really exciting so if you are looking for inspiration on that topic I highly recommend I highly recommend moon time um and then the other book that I recommend is you are amazing a help yourself guide for trusting your vibes and reclaiming your magic this one is by Sonia and Sabrina Choquette Tolley. And this one is really inspiring. It's very um, uplifting. <laughs> it's all like thrashed because I keep it in my purse. Um, I didn't finish it. I haven't, I haven't finished it. I'm only like maybe three quarters of the way or no, not even <laughs> barely halfway through. Um, but it's one of those books where like I toss it in my purse because I, I like to have a nonfiction and a fiction book in my purse. And so this is the nonfiction one of my choice lately. And I like to read a couple things here and there. I've highlighted some stuff because it was inspiring. But I, I the whole point is, is um, an inspirational book will really kind of jumpstart your um, spiritual mojo. It'll kind of help it come back to, to where it was. It'll help you um embrace your spiritual path again because it'll inspire you okay um so if you are a bookworm and whatnot i would say 
Um, always have like a spiritual book on your shelf that you're reading. You don't always have to read it to finish it, but at least have something that you are, you know, kind of working towards because like I said, it does inspire. Um, but also fiction, you know, have your favorite fiction books. I love, I'm a sucker for a young adult book, so <laughs> I will always have one of those that I'm reading. Um, but I like to kind of interchange because it's nice to have a flow of both. My next advice is check out some crystal shops. Um, you may have your one or two favorite ones that you go to that are close by, but if you are in another town or a city or whatever, when you are out there, even if you're running errands for work or you're doing something for the family, I don't know, do a quick Google search. That's what I do. And I Google search crystal shops near me or metaphysical shops near me. And usually you'll get a list on um, your, your search. And some shops will pop up, especially if they have websites. And go visit them, you know. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's like five or ten minutes just to visit a shop. And sometimes you will be there when you need to. You will find a shop, you will find a book, you'll find a crystal, a deck, whatever that you wouldn't have found if you hadn't done that search. So that's another big one for me is um, I like to check out crystal shops that are around me when I'm like visiting a city that I've never been to. If I'm out in LA, which I'm very rarely in LA, but when I am there, I will always visit a crystal shop because they have so many. <laughs> um, and inspire yourself, you guys, you know, have a look around. Sometimes you'll find a crystal that is jumping at you because you're supposed to work with it, or you'll find a deck that you never would have found if you hadn't checked it out. And so I always tell my clients when they're looking for inspiration and they love the metaphysical and they love the crystals to check out crystal shops. Um, so that's, you know, that kind of goes hand in hand with my next piece of advice is to fall in love with the tools again. So if you're a tarot reader like I am, um, you know, maybe you need to switch up your decks. Maybe you need to switch up the kind of decks that you're working with. Um, every deck has its own vibration, okay? <laughs> and the artwork too, the artwork speaks volumes. Um, so if you're working with the same deck for a long time, switch it up a little bit. Maybe you need to either buy a new deck or find one that's in your drawer that you haven't touched for a long time. Bring it out and fall in love with it again. Sometimes using a new deck will inspire you for readings. It'll inspire you all together. It'll give you new like messages and new outlooks. Um, and that's actually something I recently did because I'll tell you that I'll be honest with you guys. I've been feeling like I'm on the brink of a burnout. Um, <laughs> I don't want to completely say that I'm burned out from, from everything, but I do feel like I'm on that brink. And I tend to get like that, like, I would say when I am getting close to starting my period, that is another thing that I notice. Like I'll start, start to feel overwhelmed. Um, so I'm taking it as it is since I am creeping closer to, um, <laughs> my period. Um, but when I start to feel like this, rather than throwing everything out right away, I take a step back, you know, I'll slow down a little bit. But I did switch up my deck. Now, I recently acquired, this is the most recent deck in my collection. Um, I used to own the first edition, Star Child Tarot, and in January, I sold it to a lovely lady um, because I felt I didn't need it in my collection anymore. I never worked with it and whatnot. Well, up to about a, about a month ago, I started to regret it. <laughs> um, I really started to feel like, oh, I shouldn't have sold that deck. I, I really regretted it. I even contemplated messaging her to beg for my deck back. Um, I would like give her the money back and everything. But I was like, you know what? She works with it because I, I looked at her Instagram and she does. She uses it. So I'm like, I'm not going to take it away because I know she uses it. She loves it. Um, that was my choice to sell it and I, you know, that's, that's on me. So I was like, you know what? Why don't I just reorder the Star Child? So I realized she has the Akashic version. Um, so I, I ordered it. You guys, <laughs> when I opened this deck and I was like going through the cards one by one, um, I was impressed and I was literally like drawn back into where I felt the first initial time when I started my journey. Um, I have since worked with this. I've pulled for myself. I've also used it in some client readings and it feels like a whole new deck to me. It's weird. It's kind of like, 
it's proof like it's proof that you may not connect right away with one deck but if you wait <laughs> and pull it out at another time you will connect um it just takes the right moment the right mindset and the right emotional space to be in to work with certain decks so don't give up on them um, so the Star Child Tarot has been like what I've been working with a lot lately. Um, also my Oracle of Oddities, I've been using that one a lot. Um, but this one definitely has been surprising me. So fall in love with a deck, um, especially if you're a reader. And it doesn't have to be brand new. It could be maybe something you just haven't used. But fall in love with something different. So change that energy of the, the kind of cards that you're using or runes you know maybe you get you need a new rune set or um maybe you just need a new divination practice altogether that was another thing I started doing last year I started to heavily study astrology because I was so tired of just doing tarot I wanted something more so that was fun you know um I my studies have slowed down quite a bit because I got back into you know the tarot stuff I think I was losing my love for tarot last year because I was reading in a shop and that was hard because it started to feel like a job. Um, and I, and I never want my, my tarot journey to feel like a job. <laughs> so after I left the shop, I stopped working there in October, November ish. Um, I felt better. I started to feel like my love for tarot come back and I really haven't jumped into the astrology lessons and, you know, learning the astrology as much because I didn't feel like I needed that other outlet. It was learning astrology was kind of like a um like a distraction from feeling like tarot was turning into a job. Um so yeah. So those are my, you know, those are my tips for you guys. I hope that um that kind of helps. But I would say probably the biggest things for me is to get advice from another reader. That's a big one. Um, because they will put stuff into perspective that you may not see. Um, and then another thing is like just really falling in love with stuff that you once loved. And don't rush it. Um, it's normal to lose your spiritual mojo. It's completely normal. It happens. It comes and goes. Um, it's normal to become... Um, What's the word? It's normal to become, uh, oh my God, I just lost my train of thought. Ooh, excuse me. To, oh, burned out. <laughs> it's normal to feel burned out from something that you once loved. So you have to go with it, run with it. Um, it's okay. You will find your place again. And if you don't feel called to do a certain path, don't force it. If it comes back to you, it will come back to you if it's meant to be. And if it's meant to, for you to move on, maybe it's an indication that you are ready to move on to the next level. Um, don't ever be afraid of that. Don't ever be afraid of experimenting with your path because it's that it's meant to, you know? It's nice to stay in the same space, but just like with life, sometimes we need to move on to see what else is out there. So don't be afraid to... Um, venture off and try new things um because you will always have your familiar spots to come back to so <laughs> with that i will leave you guys with that thank you so much for watching my video um if you have questions or you wanted to vent about your spiritual mojo and whatnot um leave some comments below and um, as always, if you would love a reading with me, I am taking, you know, appointments for throughout this month of March. Um, so click the link below and check me out. If you like to inquire about anything, go ahead and send me an email. And um, other than that, I will see you guys soon. So take care and I will talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.